Just like any state across the country, Michigan has its fair share of legends, mysteries, hauntings, and everything in between. So in this video, I'll be knocking out 10 of the strangest things about the Mitten State. Stay tuned. What's going on everyone, Andrew McManaman here with Living in Michigan, a Michigan realtor helping people like you buy, sell, and invest in the amazing state of Michigan. So if there's ever anything you need, don't hesitate to reach out and I'd be happy to be your go-to resource. This video will be a little different than the ones you were used to and if you're into mysteries, legends, and all around paranormal activity, I have linked part one, two, and three to my video series about haunted places in Michigan in the description below to get your fix. Grandpa Shorter's A Souvenir Shop in Petoskey, Michigan since 1946 came out with this article a couple years ago, so I figured I would spend some time breaking it down for everyone out there. Starting off with number one, we have Little Mary's Grave in Jackson, Michigan. What might be so significant about a child's grave, you ask? Well, as said as that concept is already, according to this legend, back in 1892, Little Mary, who was the daughter of a well-known businessman in the Jackson area, put his daughter to rest in the Oak Cemetery at the age of seven. And just a few days later, the mother of little Mary woke up in the middle of the night screaming that her daughter had been buried alive. To give some closure to the situation, they did what no parent would ever want to do, and they had the grave dug up to find that claw marks were found on the inside of the casket, and visitors who were visiting nearby graves claimed they heard a crying and scratching coming from her gravesite. Moving over to number two on this list, we have the Paulding Light. This is more well known in Michigan's Upper Peninsula when people refer to the phrase, I've seen the light. I saw since 1966, there's been this mysterious light that appears in a valley just outside of Paulding near US 45 on Robbins Pond Road. Many tourists and locals state that they have seen this mysterious light, which actually changes color from white to red and green to blue. A legend says that this light comes from a lantern from a railroad brake man who was killed on the tracks that run right through the valley. Michigan Tech, a sought after university in the Upper Peninsula, actually conducted a scientific study stating it simply comes from the cars driving around in a nearby highway. Highway. But several of the locals and tourists find that outcome to be simply untrue, but rather an unexplained phenomenon. Stepping over to number three, we have the legendary Bigfoot. There are several Michiganders across the state that will tell you they have either seen or simply believe in Bigfoot and claim this hairy giant lives right here in the Great Lakes state. Over the years, there have been several claims brought to the public eye of people seeing sightings of this creature, mainly in the northern parts of Michigan. There have been trail cams that supposedly have caught this figure and the footprints and overall size of this legend has created a lot of unanswered questions. Due to the age of this article, there have easily been more than 107 documented cases of Bigfoot sightings and situations in Michigan. Most of these sightings are from near Comins, Michigan, which has earned its name as the Bigfoot capital of Michigan. For those of you watching or listening out there, do you believe in Bigfoot? Drop your thoughts, experiences, and theories in the comments. I'd be interested to hear your opinions. Number four, we have the Ada Witch. This is something I touched on in my most recent Haunted Places Michigan video series, so I will touch on it briefly here. In reference to the Blair Witch Project, Michigan has the real thing. Back in the 1800s, the Finlay Cemetery in Ada, Michigan, a local married woman snuck out in the middle of the night while her husband slept to find privacy for her late night lover. The husband ended up following her and saw all this go down and he ended up killing his wife and the mystery man according to my findings. The legend is the local married woman became the Ada Witch who wears a white dress in the cemetery as visitors claim to hear footsteps, screaming, crying, and feel that they have been touched by a ghost along with seeing a bluish green mist of a figure. Moving on over to number five, we have the Beeson Mansion and Crypt. This legend is based on the unbearable loss of a child. When the wealthy Beeson family in Niles passed away, he was put into the family crypt right across the street from the family mansion. Legends say the mother went completely insane when the child passed away and it's said that she would visit the crypt every single night where she would feed bathe and diaper the lifeless body of her child. She went as far as to leave a lantern lit in the crypt because she thought her child was afraid of the dark. She then took it to a new extreme and had gas lighting installed so she wouldn't have to deal with the lantern. After who knows how long she continued on with this, the body of her child deteriorated while in her arms and she was institutionalized and was unable to recover from the sight of that. Stepping on over to number six, we have Dogman. The first sighting of this creature was in Wexford County in 1887. Two lumberjacks spotted this creature and claimed it had a man's body, but a dog's head. Another sighting was in the Upper Peninsula where people found horses who died of fright that were surrounded by large dog-like tracks. In 1938, five wild dogs attacked a man by the name of Robert Fortney and claimed one of the dogs stood upright like a human being. 
There were also documented sightings from Manistee and Cross Village. Moving over to number seven, we have the Corn Monster of Wynn. This story gives off some Jeepers Creepers vibes if you've ever watched that movie. I just so happened to watch it at a very young age and that probably wasn't a good idea. Locals around the Wynn, Michigan area claim there is a monster that lurks around in the cornfields. A figure of a large man emerges from the fields and scares anyone driving through this rural area late at night. In 2003, a delivery man confirmed that legend. He stopped off at a country road near wind just to rest and he got out to stretch his legs and he saw this human-like creature appear on the edge of the cornfield. This man hopped in his truck as fast as he could and never looked back. Which sounds a little more realistic than the scary movies out these days. I feel like if it were a movie, he would have tripped, taken his time, screamed and looked back for a long while then run into the cornfield instead of getting into his truck and getting out of there. Switching gears to number eight, we have the Denton Road Mystery. This one is a little close to home for us Metro Detroiters. Off of Denton Road, which is located in Canton, near Ann Arbor if you're not familiar, there have been all kinds I want to explain happenings in the area, which is very interesting because Unlike the rest of the areas I'm talking about, Canton is nowhere near as rural as them. People have claimed that they see phantom headlights charge down Denton Road after other drivers and pedestrians. They have heard cries from a baby and even seen small footprints appear on nearby cars and the glowing blue mist of a woman figure. There was a nearby bridge where these events took place that can be tied back to an accident that occurred on the bridge when a mother and her baby were killed by a jealous husband, but some locals believe it was all the work of pranksters. Next we have number nine, the Singing Sand of Bay Degree. Located in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, the Bay Degree Beach is known to make a singing sound when you press down with the palm of your hands. When you are less graceful with the sand, it tends to make a barking noise. Legends say when the sand is removed from the beach to another location, these events cannot be replicated. It's said that the sounds of the sand mimic a voice of a Native American maid crying out to a lost lover who died at sea in Lake Superior. Scientists have commented on this phenomenon and said it can be replicated when all the ideal conditions are met. Size of grains, humidity, and the overall makeup of the sand, but they are not entirely sure what creates the phenomenon. Lastly, we have number 10 on the list, Grand Island Lighthouse Murder. With so many lakes in Michigan, we are known to have our fair share of lighthouses, but with that, we are known to have several stories that come with them. This is an interesting one to say the least. Let's jump back to 1890 when a small sailboat was floating by Osable Point, which had the body of a man named Edward Morrison. He was the assistant keeper at the Grand Island Lighthouse in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Some witnesses have reported that his head appeared to be smashed in with a baseball bat, but the autopsy indicated exposure was the cause of death. But a second investigation concluded it was in fact murder. After discovering the body and realizing the lighthouse beacon had not been lit for almost a week or so, some people from the Munising area went out to the island to investigate this. The head light keeper was nowhere to be found, supplies from town were still piled high on the docks, and everything within the lighthouse had appeared to be undisturbed. They even consulted with the head light keeper's wife who said she had no idea where he was, so to this day he was never found and the murder of Morrison was never solved. For those of you that have lived, vacationed, or passed through the state of Michigan, what other mysteries, legends, or all around haunted stories have you or someone you know experienced? Drop them in the comments as I always enjoy reading each one of them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more crazy things about Michigan, be sure to stick around for the next video in your queue. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, tap the subscribe button, and hit the little bell so you never miss out on an upload. Until next time.